Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Kaishel is the name in the common tongue for Chimera's southernmost continent. This is a realm that has been isolated from the portal for over a hundred million years, and most of its flora and fauna are quite unique as a result. Plenty of relics of dynasties past call the Silent Forest home. Most famous of these are the enigmatic Makers of Silence, the Morkutlot. Blind cursorial monsters that hunt by sound, which have been evolving in Chimere independently from Earth for over 350 million years. Nearly twice as ancient as Chimere's first dinosaurs. Some of these relics, however, are quite small. The subject of today's episode was also collected from Earth quite early on. It is the Pearl Bug, a humble trilobite. Like many trilobites, the pearl bug is primarily a scavenger, but occasionally hunts much smaller invertebrates. They favor sandy sediment, though are sometimes found on reefs along the subpolar coasts or rocky shores. Their shells are an off-white with striking iridescence of violet, green, and blue. The Tlatan, peoples of Kaishel, are said to revere this creature. It curls into a snug ball when threatened, more secure than many other trilobites, and according to third or fourth hand sources, the Tlatan regard it as an icon of defense and security. It is also an undoubtedly beautiful creature, and its iridescent white shells are found throughout the known world as high value currency by Kaleen merchants. It is rare for them to make their way all the way up to the known world through Kaleen trade networks, but it occurs often enough that the Assembly has been able to trade for a fairly substantial collection even though they have been authorized to have precious few research missions to Kaishel itself. Beyond its cultural and economic value, the Assembly has further interest in this animal. Phylogeny In the 1960s, an agathonosian anatomist named Dr. Lance Carter suggested the pearl bug might be a lycid trilobite. Lycids are presumed to have gone extinct on Earth around 375 million years ago, and not long after on Chimere, perhaps under similar conditions. As the land became overtaken by the first soil and the plants that followed, a massive release of limiting nutrients resulted in the waterways and shallow seas becoming saturated by algal and magical blooms. This killed a vast majority of aquatic life on both planets. However, an earlier extinction event in Earth, perhaps caused by climate change, continental motion, or an asteroid impact, may have actually killed off lichens on Earth prior to the greening as they seem to have been rare, if not already extinct, by this event on Earth. Regardless, this clade has been absent from both planets for a very long time. Lycid's most famous members had ornate protuberances stemming from their carapaces, though there were many more subtle, and often some looked not quite different from the pearl bug. Dr. Carter's classification has been met with skepticism. Many of the anatomical markers he cited could be the result of convergence. Only two lineages of trilobite are known to have survived the greening of Chimere, the Protids and the Harpids. Harpids have remained largely as they were from the onset of the first dynasty. Protids, on the other hand, have undergone numerous adaptive radiations. 
Some have developed very sophisticated feeding apparatuses, others evolved to be specialized diggers, some free swimming, and even overcame a hurdle they never cleared on Earth, evolving in a terrestrial clade. The point being, Dr. Carter's critics cite that the protids have demonstrated so many significant divergences from their ancestral body plan since arriving in Chimer. This seems a more plausible explanation for their seeming similarities to basal lichens than a ghost lineage persisting without any evidence in the fossil record for over a third of a billion years. This speaks to a challenge the Assembly faces when trying to understand the phylogeny of animals in Chimere. Comparative anatomy can often get very close, but there's still a degree of uncertainty. While this is an extremely wealthy organization, it lacks the resources to conduct genetic testing on every animal. Even if genetic tests were possible for everything, such studies still might not clarify the pearl bug's phylogeny. Genetic studies are reliant upon comparison. They need living examples. Without a confirmed lichen, it would be very difficult to verify. Even a distant relationship to known protids might still not be enough to confirm it belongs to the lichens. Indeed, other anatomists have suggested them to be Scipion neptunids, a lineage of protid extinct in the known world, and often remarked to have similarities to the lichens. Now, a study of potential Scipion neptunids from the inland sea of Kairul could link these two clades, but even that wouldn't necessarily confirm them to be lichids or Scipion neptunids, as neither clade could be completely certain to be assigned to either group. Indeed, the pearl bug could be from an entirely different lineage. It seems quite distinct from the trilobites of the known world, but little more can be said with much confidence. Of course, it must be said that phylogeny is a way that humans observe and attempt to classify the natural world. It represents hypotheses of relationships. They are built on truth and evidence, but just like binomial names, it's all about our understanding and perception. Clades are words that we use to communicate relationships. The relationships are real, the tears of these clades less so. You can never leave your ancestral clades, so if they are descended from lichens, they are lichens. But after hundreds of millions of years, the pearl bug has certainly become a distinct lineage. They seem to have fairly basal anatomy, so don't offer a whole lot of insight into lichens, even if they did descend from such organisms. It would certainly have some importance to lichen researchers, and hardy survivors of once extinct lineages are quite exciting, but is this likely a question that will never be resolved? Most researchers study and engage with their literature without strong assertions about the phylogeny of the pearl bug. Cheers to the Siren Lord for sponsoring this episode. Along with a passion for trilobites, this sponsor is also a fellow author. His first fantasy novel, The Saga of Mira, came out in 2023, and the sequel, The Western Voyage, is set to be released later this year. At noon today, Eastern Standard Time, I will be hosting a Q&A livestream. More on that in a moment. As with my other Trilobite episodes this year, I owe great thanks to the Museum of the Earth. Their specimens for reference and staff for questions was an invaluable resource. The Museum of the Earth is facing hard times and has had to downsize a lot of the aspects of their operations in order to compensate. Direct donations go a long way in keeping priceless educational organizations like this one going. I've seen a change.org site going around, and while the awareness is good, donations to that only spread the word they don't actually fund the museum. I've included a link here and in the description of the video if you want to more directly contribute to the museum. Thank you so much for bringing me to 15,000 subscribers. I began this channel to promote Chimer and my books. I didn't think it would go very far and certainly never imagined it would become a cornerstone of my creative work. Thanks to this channel, I've been able to quit my day job and make writing stories and developing this world my full-time career. 
To offer my thanks, I've scheduled a Q&A live stream. We'll be at noon today on the 15th of the month to celebrate this milestone. This live stream won't be a fundraiser. I will encourage donations to the Museum of the Earth and will include the link to the donation page in the live stream, but I don't think me doing a live stream fundraiser would actually help them very efficiently. If you paid me to pay them, that means PayPal shaves some off the top, and even more so if the payment was through YouTube. You're much better off directly contributing to the museum. My live stream will be a Q&A starting at noon today, so two hours from when this episode you're watching will be published. Live stream will likely go for an hour or two depending on how many questions we get. Super chats are ever appreciated, but I'll try to answer everyone's questions regardless of payment. As is the nature of these live streams, I won't have my notes with me, so I can't say I'll be able to give everything a perfect answer, but I'll do my best and will of course post it to view later so you can still watch if you miss the stream. Thanks again to the Siren Lord, to my new and most generous Patreon patrons for your support, and thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see a lot of you in a couple hours. Stay fantastic everyone. Cheers folks! <laughs>